Call this meeting to order. Sorry about the delay, folks. Uh, item two, disclosure pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. None. Approval or amendments of meeting agenda. Be it resolved that council approve the agenda of the committee of the whole meeting dated January 11, 2022 as presented. Move into seconder, please. Bill and Joe, discussion. Go ahead, Doug. Just trying to check and make sure I was in under uh, whole business there or yep. whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. As long as we're there. Any else? All in favor? Okay. Approval of the minutes. We have resolved that council approve the following minutes as presented. Regular meeting of council December the 21st, 2021. A mover and a seconder. Pat and Joe. Discussion on the minutes. Any all in favor? Okay. Is there any business arising from the minutes? Okay. I'm going to go straight to number nine. Staffing committee reports. 9.1 Public Works Report, December 20, uh, 2021 report. Has everybody had an opportunity to look at the report? Is there any comments, concerns? Joe? I got a problem with the Public Works uh, Report and the Bylaw Enforcement Report, especially with the snow removal. Public Works saying they have some safety issues and hazards with the cars, vehicles being parked, but yet the bylaw officer says that everything is hunky-dory, he's telling people to move and everything's going smooth. I would really like to know and clarify if there's an issue or not and try to get to the bottom of it, if there is. Okay, well, we can talk to Dave. Dave, would you? Uh, yeah, on that? Uh, can, you, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, uh, cars aren't being moved in the parking lots and uh, throughout the town. They're just, he's talking to them, but they're not being moved. They, they, they got to be towed now. Okay. But, go ahead, Bill. Uh, uh, on, this, on this subject, they, uh, so they have been warned, is what you're saying? Yeah, they've they been have... warned a few times now. Yeah. Okay, so... So okay, so why is Pete not ticketing them? Do you have any idea? I don't. I don't know. He hasn't said that. He likes to talk to them a few times, I guess, before he tickets them. But uh, okay, well, I don't did, know yeah. why he hasn't been ticketing them. Okay, so he has given them warning, and it's the same people who are this, the the repeat offenders, is what you're saying? Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Well, then, to me, that that has to be acted upon. He's already given them their warning, so. If this continues, yeah. uh, they should be ticketed. That's. Uh, I, I like the fact that he gives them a warning, you know, and they still do it again. Yep, no, well, that's, yep. Yeah. Wow. Okay. okay. Well, I support that. That should be done. So. John, did you? Uh, sorry, Doug. Uh, just wondering if uh, where, where our uh, application to the government for fines and all that good stuff is at. Is that now approved? Did the Attorney General will approve our fine schedule and all those good things. I believe John can answer that question. Yes, <clears throat> thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> the, uh, the the government has approved the uh, the fine structures. Uh, the issue, I believe, with the tickets is uh, we could not print the ticket book until we got the approval from the government. So I think that we don't have the actual book yet. It's in for printing. I could be wrong. Maybe we have it today or tomorrow. Uh, but I think that's probably why the holdup is. So our bylaw officers got out, told the people that you know once we. Once we have ticket books, uh, there, will, there will be tickets issued. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Angela, you had your hand up. Yeah. What was up with the sander on the trackless or the sidewalk? Uh, the they're list? waiting for the vibrator, I believe, to be installed. Oh, right, okay. Dave? Yeah, the new one you're talking about? Yeah. The new trackless uh, sander? Yeah. We're waiting. Yeah, we're waiting for the vibrator. 
It should oh, be okay. installed anytime. Okay. But the old one is still working though. Okay, so can I ask a curiosity question since we're on that subject? Sure. How many, uh, how much roadway does it, or how, how much distance can you get out of the track list when you're sanding? Well, you without having to refill once. it? Huh? Once through town. Once through town? Okay. Yeah, one side. Okay. Okay. Joe. Thank you. On another note, Saturday, we went down, took a look at the building going up. It's uh, it's going to be a really nice building when this is completed. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I encourage everybody to go down and take a look when you have a chance. It's going to be a wonderful looking building. It's about time also. Anything else? Public Works? Thank you. Animal Control 9.2. Anybody have any questions or comments? Joe? The only thing I did is by reading it over, there's a lot of uh, people that approach uh, the animal control to say that they, their animals need veterinary help, but they can't afford it. So like, I don't understand that. It's, it's, it, that doesn't fall on us to help them out to fix their animals, does it? No, no, God, no. No, they're probably just looking for an outlet somewhere where they, somebody can help them, basically. That's all I can think of. Doug? Yes, and I would add, you know, I think that's really excellent service. The, the, the things that she does help those people out with, referring them to places where they can take their pets for free spading and neutering, that kind of thing. I, I think it's a very responsible approach to uh, managing uh, pets in our town. Go ahead, Pat. Okay, that's, uh, I've worked with her for uh, quite a few times. That's part of what their volunteer committee does is uh, looking after that, that aspect of it. So they are um, for, it's not for free. Um, the, uh, they, the animals go down to North Bay to the uh, Humane Society down there for spaying, neutering and their vaccines. Okay. Uh, I believe the basics is 135 and you're on a long waiting list because first she's going out and uh, when she's told how many animals she can bring down for a specific appointment, then she's going out and setting the traps in the uh, in our wild mm -hmm. cat population around mm -hmm. here in the different camps and collecting as many of those and then if she's got Okay, start again. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sound like you, Doug, starting all over again, Lux. Okay, this is part of what her volunteer committee does as well, and she spearheads that. Um, for for the local people all the way through the Tri Towns, uh, the service isn't free. It's one hundred and thirty five dollars for spaying or neut and neutering and vaccines through North Bay Humane Society. And first she goes, uh, whenever she's got an appointment and said, we have room for nine males, then she's going out and setting out the live traps uh, in the different cat camps around here to try and catch um, enough of them to get them spayed or neutered. And then if she has, if she doesn't get enough, then she's calling the people on her list. So sometimes you can be a year or more waiting, but these are things that her whole volunteer committee does as well. And they fundraise, so this isn't coming out of our expenses to her. This is this is coming out of uh, the ones that are uh, from the cat population. This is through all the fundraising that they do on their own too. So it's a really good service, and she does go to anyone that's having problems um, with help with their pets, like for seniors that are having trouble. I I remember back uh, a while back. Um, one lady was having trouble because her small dog was zipping out the door uh, when she, whenever she tried to get out. So her, she and her committee went and they built a, a little fence gate at the end of the porch. So if the dog gets out into the porch, it's still contained and can be zipped back in the house before she goes out that gate to go. So she does 
you know, she and her committee do all sorts of extra things like that to make things better. Good. And and the complaints that she gets, then she's acting on them if the complaints go in through the town office. Good, nice. Any more? Okay. Be it resolved that council accept the staff and committee reports as presented. A mover and a seconder. Pat and Angela, all in favor? Carried. Item 10, item for council direction. 10.1, the draft vaccination bylaw. Has everyone had an opportunity to look at the draft vaccination bylaw? Go ahead, anybody? Doug? You're muted, Doug. See, I'll just fess up silently and say, yes, I am too. I knew that. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I, I don't mind. I do that from time to time. Uh, just a couple of points uh, when I was reading through it. Uh, generally, I'm very much in favor of this uh, particular bylaw. Uh, I, I, I think it is fairly comprehensive. I will note that in our discussions with the union regarding uh, the, uh, the negotiations, we also discussed with them a vaccination policy and the union acknowledged the town's right to insist upon vaccination, but they also asked that we include uh, an opportunity to work from home where available. And I think perhaps um, if that is a possibility for any people who may not be vaccinated, uh, we should probably outline that in this policy. Uh, and the other thing that I was kind of curious about, we do say starting Jan uh, 31st, I think it was, uh, well, they'll have to be vaccinated by April 30th. Uh, the second dose no later than April 15. Uh, they got to disclose by the 31st. And uh, then we go into what's going to happen to them uh, if they aren't vaccinated, the current hires, employees who have confirmed they're not fully vaccinated. I'm wondering if we should have a date in there that says they can maintain that status to uh, the April 30th, just to reinforce the idea that by that date, they need to be vaccinated. Okay, what's council's feelings on that? We have a show of hands or a nod or whatever. Hey. Anything else? Pat? Okay. So then uh, what's the direction we're giving the staff then? You want to add that date to this document? Yes, I, I would like them to add the fact that, uh, you know, working from home will be an option that may be extended. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think, as I said, put in a date there to uh, just reinforce the idea that April 30th is the deadline. Okay, go ahead, Angela. Do we really want to put that in the bylaw, though? We, we've we already, when necessary, we have allowed working from home. I, I think that's an HR management thing. I don't think that's a bylaw thing. Sorry, I just, I, that just crossed my mind. Well, if I may, uh, yeah. Your Worship, uh, we do outline a whole lot of things that may happen if they're not. Um, uh, rapid antigen testing, testing done during working time, weekly testing, uh, the, the times that it's going to happen, uh, what they have to do if they're getting, all of that is in there. So we're being fairly specific about what will be done and what will happen. When we talk about uh, uh, the additional requirements, employees who are not fully vaccinated or do not disclose the vaccine status may be subject to additional requirements such as redeployment. And I suspect that might be an area where redeployment could be interpreted as work from home. Uh, so that's why I brought that up. I, I, I think we could spec specify it there. 
and, and, and it goes on to say, you know, leave of absence, termination, et cetera, as determined by the town. But I would just like to see that in because it was a request from the union, and I think it was a fair request. Go ahead, Angela. Not that I think our employees would do that, but that opens a window for somebody to say, well, if I'm not double vaccinated, then let me work from home. Yes. Rather, rather than getting vaccinated, which. Yes. Yes. But if they're working for home, then they're not in the office. They're not in contact with other workers. So I don't see any potential threat there. Well, I'm not sure. Go ahead, Pat. Um, yeah, they were they worked from home for you know a long time last year too. Um, if the question is, can they continue to work from home um, and still do the full job? This it. This is my concern. Is um, you know, can you access everything? Because I don't know how much of it. Maybe it's all on computer now. It used to be before, you know, you were zipping here for a file, zipping there for a file, uh, you know, paper files, that kind of thing. Can the whole job be done from home? Um, you know, my, my concern really is they should all be vaccinated, but um, I'd like to, uh, you know, go with the, what the union's saying too, so. Okay, uh, Joe. I think the redeployment kind of covers that, Doug. Um, from reading it, that's what I get. A redeployment could mean we'll locate you somewhere else, hence at home to do your job, uh, give you full access via computer. Um, also, I don't see no problem. I think if I'm not mistaken, I think everybody is vaccinated, double vax as, as, a, matter, as a matter of fact for the town, is it not? Um, like we got the office closed. I'm pretty sure everyone's double vax by now. We've got all the protections in place. Okay. Bill? I, I just like to, sorry. You're muted, Bill. Okay, sorry, something happened. Uh, I guess working from home is an interim measure, right? During this pandemic, it's not something that they did before. So, once this is over, and I hope it is over, uh, my only concern is, will they always want to work from home? And I think there has to be a, there has to be a presence in the office because eventually we're going to open up that office once this pandemic's over. I, I'd like to see a little bit more uh, feedback on this uh, before I vote on it. I, I, I'm not sure why they want to work from home right now uh, or if we go down that slope, uh, is it going to be something that they're going to request full time once this is over? That's the only thing. Like, I think that office needs to be open. I, I mean, I, I like to see it open once the pandemic's over. And a lot of people are asking that. Why isn't the office open? Well, it isn't open because we have a pandemic. Okay. I'd just like to see a little bit more feedback and a little bit more information on as to why and uh, they want this. Your Worship? Yeah. Uh, at the end of the bylaw here, it states that this policy will be reviewed and amended as deemed necessary by the town. So that means it's always going to be ongoing as this COVID uh, progresses, how it right. may change. So that leaves that open up to amendments on this bylaw. as well as we did state that we would always be uh, continuing to monitor the public health and government directives for us over this time period. Okay, Bill? Yep. Okay. Okay, so everybody's good. We'll make the changes that uh, have been requested. That's the direction I'm getting from council. And then we'll proceed with this, getting this bylaw put forward. Okay. Thank you. So it's, hey. Go ahead, Doug. Oh, I was just thanking you. I, I... Oh, okay. You're welcome. Just okay. Sorry, George. Yeah. Or your worship. Sorry. Through you, your worship. Yeah. 
And is it fair to say that this is an interim measure? Can we say that? Working from home is an interim measure. Inter well, I, your work, go ahead. Um, the, to work from home depends on your uh, position with the town, if it's applicable. If it is, if you are able to fulfill your entire job duties from your home, yeah, but that's I, what has I, to be checked into what is capable. What I'm saying is, we're going to allow the request because as an interim measure, as a result of the pandemic. Okay, once the pandemic is over, if it's over, are we going to continue? Are they going to continue to ask for people to work from home? That's my concern. I don't believe so. Not once the pan there'll be no reason once the pandemic's over. So then it's an interim measure. I would think so. As a result of the pandemic. Yeah. Yes, Your Worship. Okay, Angela. I, I just thought maybe we should clarify that we're talking about a vaccination policy, not not the pandemic right now. Mm -hmm. It was the policy itself for vaccinations that we're talking about. Absolutely. The pandemic is a whole different story. Yeah. Well, it is, but it isn't, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we'll well, adjust it accordingly and yes. move on from there. Okay. Thank you for the direction. Uh, 10.2 animal control contract, tender or renewal. John, are you going to get, you want to give us some direction on this as to uh, what we're up against here? Yes, <clears throat> thank you, Your Worship. The, uh, the the topic as to whether we should be going out to tender uh, for these services was brought up uh, a number of months ago um, for various reasons, uh, but there was never clear direction given. <clears throat> so if council is at a stage now where they would like to direct staff to prepare a tender process to go out for animal control services, then we shall do that. Uh, if not, <clears throat> The intent is to bring the existing uh, contract back uh, for review and see if there are rooms or, or area for improvement. And I know we've talked to the animal control officer about areas where we, we think there is a, a room for improvement. Um, so we're just seeking direction as to whether you want to see the contract as it is and debate it, or if you would like to actually have staff prepare a call for proposal to go out. <clears throat> Go ahead, Pat. Uh, okay. Uh, in all the years I've been here, I've never seen our animal control be done more humanely or better than with this group. And uh, so I'm very pleased with them. I think it was a three-year contract, so it comes up for renewal sometime this year, I take it. If I glanced at it right. Um, so I'd be quite happy with just... Uh, Renewal, going over the contract with her, um, making any suggestions, uh, the things that you've brought up before, John, and um, and doing that. That's my thought on it. Okay, anyone else have any? Joe? Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, personally, I'd like to see it go out for tender. Uh, let's see what else is out there. If there's other people who can do this job too. Um, you, know, you can't always have your eggs in one basket. Let's see what else. I mean, there might be some quail eggs out there. Okay, Angela. Um, I'm with Joe. I, it's not that I'm dissatisfied with the service we're receiving. I am satisfied with it. However, it's always smart to see what else may be out there. I don't hold out any high hopes, but it never hurts to look. And it's usually a smart thing to do. Okay, Doug. Doug. <laughs> Can't hear you. Kinds of weird notes from people that are unexpected. I, I can get to the unmute without being told to unmute. <laughs> My golly. Anyway, enough said on that. Um, yeah, I, I, I think uh, it's always a good idea to go out and uh, uh, advertise a contract. I think uh, 
Uh, <laughs> the service that we've been provided has been the best I've ever seen, and I'm absolutely 100% beside continue, behind continuing it. Uh, but that said, and I don't really like uh, uh, little tiny eggs like as much as Joe does, but um, I, I think you know we have a policy for purchasing that involves getting three quotes on everything we do. And I think we should be consistent in the application of those kinds of policies. So I think we should go ahead and advertise. Okay. So go ahead, Bill. Yeah, I also agree. Uh, true, you, Your Worship. I also agree that uh, we should go out for tender. I think it's. Uh, I think it makes us look uh, that we're we're fair and uh, we're always looking for something better. Um, there may not be nothing out there, but at least we we put it out for tender and let other people um apply also no problem sounds good okay you have the direction steve yes okay thank you very much nothing else to add to that folks thank you 10.3 opp charges into tax levy john again please Thank you, Your Worship. As Council knows, we've been slowly over the last two or three years um, taking the individual charges, uh, such as lights and, and uh, garbage, uh, out of a user fee structure. For some reason, um, I think it was, I'm not sure if it was the last Council or the one before, uh, wanted those particular charges out. Uh, as a general rule, they're uh, lumped in with the, uh, uh, the property taxation and certainly. Uh, it makes more sense to have it there. Um, as, uh, as mentioned by our auditor every year, that, that this matter should be uh, out, out um, with, the, uh, with the general tax bill. So for us to accomplish that and finally get back to um, the regular billing for um, items of uh, general operations and things like lighting and garbage and, and now OBP, uh, it should be a pass now. So it's ready to put it in there in the interim. Um, <clears throat> let it, so we can have it ready for the interim levy. <clears throat> and uh, further, it, it resolves some issues as to who has to pay the charges and who does not, especially with their uh, off, um, whether they're on the property tax roll or not. Or let's say if somebody has two apartments and we don't know about that and they're charged one, one OPP charge, it, it's, a, it's a bit of a headache that we're always looking for. Uh, so it makes uh, it makes rational sense to uh, to have it as the general uh, in our general levy and treat it as a regular property assessment assessment matter. So that's our recommendation. Okay, Angela. So are you telling me that people are going to be paying police charges based on their um, basically their impact assessment of their house? That's correct. Like every other charge, yeah. like everything just, else, that's sorry. that's uh, for some straight for for whether whether it's uh, good or bad. Property mm -hmm. assessment is a structured uh, process for kind of collecting property taxes, and the province has deemed it that it, it is based on assessment. Uh, so that's that argument comes up every now and then. Um, but uh, where would you stop? Because everything uh, everything is linked in in the same way OPP charges are linked in for the services such as education costs and all of that. So to argue against having it on the tax roll is arguing against the uh, basis for property assessment as set by the province of Ontario. Hey, Angela. Okay, well, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you why I actually disagree with that because I live in a bigger home. So therefore my tax levy is higher, but I am one person. So you're telling me I'm gonna say pay more than a five person household with three juvenile delinquents in it. And I'm not saying we have that in Cobalt, but I'm just giving you that as an example that get the police calls all the time. Well, you know- I, I disagree, I'm sorry. Fair, fair on, on you, Councillor Ed said, but what you're disagreeing with is the basic uh, way we uh, apply property taxes and the basic way assessment. And, and unfortunately or not, and I, I think it's the fairest of the unfair ways uh, assessment is based on ability to pay. So the higher the assessment, the better the ability to pay. The argument is can always be brought into why am I paying for school taxes when I don't have any children? Why am I paying for police when I never call the police? That kind of stuff. However, how that system works in Ontario, 
And we're, we're one of the few exceptions that I know of that lump these into user charges, which are traditionally in, in the regular assessment uh, process. Okay, Bill? Uh, yeah, I kind of agree with Councillor uh, Adset. I mean, uh, I don't like the way you say the ability to pay because uh, we have a higher tax assessment, but what are the other options? Explain to me what, what other option do we have? The option is uh, leaving it as a, a, a charge. Like if we leave it at the, at the same way, uh, which I, I'm advising is inefficient and uh, away from the standard of uh, property assessment in the Sorry. province of Ontario, uh, that's the other option. The, uh, so, but if you go down that particular slippery slope, that applies to everything. That's where the argument, when the argument came in about the garbage, uh, when we did it and brought it into the uh, assessment role, the same argument was made. And, and often councillors at municipal levels have this argument, and, and I understand it. However, um, property assessment is a very set methodology for councils to levy the property taxes. So if you go in and start looking at individual houses, who's in there, how many washrooms, all of that stuff, it just is totally onerous, and that's why the province has decided to go on the assessment basis. Okay. Councilor Radson. And again, I'm, I'm going to strenuously disagree with this. I'm sorry, that's not fair, and I really have a problem with the way that that was phrased, that just because I live in a bigger house and I have a higher assessment value means I have a better ability to pay my taxes than somebody who lives in a smaller house. I'm on a fixed income, and I'm a retired person. No. That is not a true statement, sorry. So just, just for clarification, uh, Your Worship, that is a true statement. <laughs> That's a fact uh, that assessment, the assessment basis in Ontario is based on the assessed value, market value of homes. And that's how municipalities bill out their tax rate is based on uh, assessed values of home. And the options are to go down and, and start uh, carving out areas where individual homes are different from other individual homes uh, makes no sense at all, I'm afraid. Bill? Well, I agree with Councillor Ansett. I, I think it's very unfair. And uh, I just, uh, no, I don't like it at all. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a retired person too. So the only way I could reduce it is uh, sell my house and go into something smaller or cheaper. And uh, we're not going to certainly attract uh, retired people here or better people when, uh, you know, they get to know the ins and outs of how things are done and why we're paying user fees at a higher rate just because someone thinks that we have the ability to pay. Sorry, I totally disagree with this. Okay, last one, Councillor Ratzett. I don't understand why the push to change this. It's in our special charges on our tax bills now. It's just not linked to the tax levy. So I, I, I don't get the rationale of where this is coming from other than we want to become like the rest of the province. Well, we're a small municipality. We're not like some of the big cities. We're not like some of the bigger centers. Hey, that's fine. Uh, anyone else? So Doug? Doug. <laughs> Bless these little pop-ups. Um, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a little bit leaning towards Angela's question of uh, if it is currently separate, why bury it elsewhere? I, I Leaning towards the theory of transparency and letting people know what they're paying for and how much they're paying. Uh, Personally, I kind of like seeing all kinds of things being itemized uh, in tax reporting. Uh, and I think perhaps this is one of those things. Okay. So what direction are you giving staff now? Do you want us to come to council at a next meeting with a motion to put this into the charges or what's your direction? Go ahead, Angela. It is in the charges already on the tax bill. It's under our special charges. 
Okay, then you want a motion to leave it as it is? That's what I'm recommending. Why change something that's working? That's what we want to know. We want to know what your uh, direction is. Go ahead, Bill. No, yeah, I agree with her. The same thing. Leave. Why change it? Okay. okay. You got that, Steve? Yeah, that's your workshop. Thanks a lot, John. Go ahead, Doug. I, I was just wondering if we could give John one last shot at why change it. <laughs> uh, why change it? Because it makes sense. <laughs> Uh, and it's it's rational and it complies with the legislation in the province of Ontario. And, and if you want to separate separate charges out for different classes of services, um, then it makes for one big headache in trying to administer uh, our property tax system. And it also uh, allows a lot of different areas to fall through the loopholes. And so um, this battle has been fought and fought and fought and lost and lost and lost over the years. And uh, as far as I know, really small or large, doesn't matter. Uh, the charges for services like street lights, road maintenance, uh, education and all that are through your property assessment system. And I don't know if it's a matter of training to understand how the property assessment it is a complicated uh, methodology, but uh, the arguments that are being put forward tonight apologetically, have been put forward for years and years and years and, and just do not stand up to the test of time where it would take an army of people to go through every house and say uh, who's in there, how many children, that kind of thing. So they established on a fair way of doing it, was, which is including these types of charges um, under your property assessment billing. And if you look back at the, when we did the uh, the property increase uh, on taxes, there, there is a, a medium valuation um, across the board. There are some higher, uh, whatever assessments, some lower, but most of this will fall into the same area where the majority of the load is taken up by the average assessment base in, in, uh, in Cobalt. In the same way it is, in, as far as I know, every other municipality in Ontario and was only changed in Cobalt, as I understand it, was to, because the uh, a mayor of the day thought it was important to identify each of the charges. And that's why they started with lights, garbage, uh, OPP, all of those things, but they're, they belong in the assessment base is where they belong. So that we have a revenue and an operations and that the special charges if you, if you keep putting things into special charges, the benefit I think for a municipal council is your tax rate is lower than other tax rates in, in, in other municipalities because of that. Okay, so some, there, there's a bit of a, you know, an incentive to chunk things out into user charges so they're not picked up by, by the tax rate where people compare municipalities. So if, and somebody comes from another town and they look at Cobalt and they say, oh, wow, the tax rate is, is really, really low. And then they find out, oh, wait a second, we're getting a water bill, we're getting a sewer bill, we're getting a light bill, we're getting an OPP bill. It's not fair, it's not reasonable, and perhaps I'm not making the argument well enough, obviously, but uh, I'm just trying to, uh, as a former manager of assessment and taxation for the uh, territorial government in Northwest Territories, <laughs> I was sent out to make this argument to a lot of uh, different municipalities to, to sort of rationalize and formalize the, the assessment basis for, uh, for Canada. Okay. Uh, uh, Doug and then uh, Pat. Oh, thank you, Your Worship. Hey, I'm live. Thank you, Your work. Well, that's a question, isn't it? But anyway. <laughs> um, I'm, I, I'm thinking of actually asking uh, that we defer this issue uh, and try to find a little bit more out about it. I'm, I'm, I'm still a little bit at sea as which way to go. Uh, I think John's making some cogent arguments. I think Angela has too, and Bill. And uh, I would just like a little bit more time to uh, think on it and perhaps give everybody an opportunity to uh, more clearly state their case if management would like to do that. Our staff would like to do that. Joe, uh, Pat, sorry. Yeah, um, I'm for pulling it into the the tax billing the way the other stuff has. 
Uh, over the years, uh, we've heard the arguments over and over again from different councils I've been on, and I voted for each of those charges to be brought in um, along the way. So that's the way I'll be voting on it. Joe? I agree with Doug. I'd like to defer this also. I'd like to re review this a little deeper. Okay, could we have a show of hands as to who would like to defer this then and not a vote, just a... Okay, let's defer. Can we defer that to our next committee meeting then? Yes, Your Worship. Would that be adequate? Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, Your Worship, uh, perhaps uh, John could come up with a, an explanation a little bit better, uh, perhaps uh, show the pros and cons of both ways. Uh, is that possible? Like a chart or something that I like looking at a chart or having a chance to look at it before the meeting so I could actually see uh, the pros and cons of the both ways. Yeah, I think we can get something like that, Eldie. Between John and Steve. Okay, so we're gonna defer this then to our next committee at a whole meeting. Okay. Bylaw 2002-004, Purchasing Policy Review. Steve, do you want to speak to this a little bit uh, to get it going? Or? Yes, Your Worship. Uh, after reviewing uh, the purchasing policy or bylaw in effect, um, seeing uh, how old this one is, and this goes back uh 17 years now so with the purchasing agreements it's up to here it says that 3.1 up to a thousand dollars at the discretion of the department head a uh, thousand to five thousand written of three verbal or written quotes and five thousand to ten thousand to receive three written quotes well these were the costs back in 2005 and to do all of these uh, procedures with today's, we would almost have to have a procurement division here with the town. Therefore, uh, later th this year, we were third quarter, we'd like to increase these amounts because this is based on 2005 purchases. So that would be something to look at uh, purchasing down the road. But at the time, we stopped to buy by the current bylaws here. Okay, uh, Councillor Gabani, this was your uh, your cup of tea. Do you want to speak to this uh, item? Well, yeah, my big concern. I I haven't. I don't have any. I have a problem with uh, the department head. You know, like a thousand dollars, or if you wanted to increase that a little bit, fine. But uh, when we buy, uh, how do I say it? When you buy commodities such as sand, where there's a lot of other contractors that supply uh, the same type of materials that we're buying and the, pur the purchase is, is significant, it's probably well over $5,000, then I'm of the opinion that three quotes should be, should three, you should, it should go out to tender and you should get three quotes on it. Um, that, was one, that was my concern, one of my biggest concern. And, um, without getting into a lot of other things, uh, I would like to see that continue. Um, but I'm not sure what price that you're suggesting, uh, Steve, uh, that you're going to say, well, the department head has so much uh, leeway here that he can work with a, with a number. But significant purchases to me need to go out for quotes. And I'd like, and that's just integrity. And I would like that, uh, just to you know, to show other contractors who's you know who may be able to supply material for us or whatever uh, that we're fair, and uh, we talked about it that previously. So, uh, in order to continue being fair, um, we need to continue with those with this policy and adhere to the quotes. Okay. Any other comments, uh, John? Uh, go ahead, Doug. Sorry. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, 
I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement with Councillor Gabani. Uh, I could see a small increase in those sums, uh, but I don't think a huge increase. And, you know, I go back 30 years and uh, these were the same numbers that we had back in uh, 1989, 1990, when we took office then and we inherited them. So they go back farther than that. And I realize inflation and a whole lot of other things have crept in. And some of these uh, dollar amounts are perhaps a little bit low. Uh, so I would certainly give room there. I'd like to see a firm recommendation from uh, staff on what those numbers would be. Uh, and, you know, most of it is pretty good. Uh, for non-budgetary items, expenditures, item 3.4, uh, the same thing would probably apply there as well. Uh, but I question what we're doing about committee chairperson and council ratification before the purchase is made. Do we, I don't think we have a committee chairperson per no, se no. in place. No. no, this bylaw definitely has to be uh, tweaked a little bit. It's been uh -huh. a date. We haven't had any committee chairs this whole, uh, this whole term. Yeah, you know, I've been nominal representative as Joe yeah. has to public works, but we aren't per se a committee chairperson. Mm. So it definitely does need some tweaking there. It does. Yeah. That's all I got to say. Angela? I, I agree that the numbers are from a while ago and yeah, I can see an increase in those numbers. However, um, I, I, with Councillor Wilcox, I'd like to see what staff recommends for an increase. Um, but we also still have to keep in mind that all councillors were, as councillors, we're kind of on the hook to oversee things. And when things aren't overseen, we get raked over the coals by the residents. Okay. Okay, so. Uh... Your direction then is you would like to see this bylaw rewritten somewhat and bring it back to the next committee to whole meeting or another review. That, uh, am I correct in thinking that? Okay. Your worship, can we bring this at, at a later date out at the uh, next committee? Next committee to whole meeting. Uh, further down the line so we could get more uh, costs. Okay. Here. Is that is that adequate then? There's no big, if we do it in the second, uh, not this next committee, but the one after? Possibly at the end of the second quarter of the year. Oh, go ahead, Angela. Yeah, as long as we're still following our old bylaw until such mm -hmm. time that happens. Yeah. yeah. Okay, very good then. So, uh, Bill? So, in point of clarification then, I guess we're on an agreement that we continue with significant purchases is that we have to go out for three quotes. And if, if you can't, if, you, if for some reason you can't get three quotes, uh, I would like to see an explanation as to why or whatever. Uh, you know, we, we attempted to get three quotes and it was only one person that actually, say, say as an example, it was only one person that actually uh, submitted a quote. But we, yeah. Yeah. so we're going to stick to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want to make sure that that is going to continue. Yeah, and we will stick to that. And uh, I know Dave can vouch for this also. We have had several times where we have gone out for three quotes. And a lot of times no one will respond or right. only one person. Is that not correct, Dave? You're muted, Dave. There you go. What about that? There we go. Good. Uh, yeah, that's correct, George. Yeah, you, you just can't get the quotes you want to get. You know, not everybody comes back with a quote for you. But I guess as long as we have names, maybe that could, would that uh, suffice as, you know, we did contact yeah. so-and-so, no response, so-and-so, no response. And, yeah. and, that, and that's yeah. fair. No, exactly. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and go that's ahead, fair. I, I would accept that. 
uh, okay. that just shows integrity on our part. That's all. And yeah. That's what I'm concerned about. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Transparency. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All good. All good. Okay, 10.5, Amendment to Traffic and Parking Bylaw, 2021-32. What are the amendments that were? Concerns, comments? Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Doug. Got him. Oh, okay. I'm not getting very good at that tonight, am I? Anyway. <laughs> uh, I, I note on the front cover, it says read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed the 11th day of January 22. Um, last meeting, we, we asked for bylaws to be read a first and second time at one meeting and finally passed uh, on the following meeting. And we did that because in this town, we recognize that it takes a while sometimes for these kinds of things to permeate, percolate down through our town to our various residents who may or may not have an interest in what's proposed that's going to affect them. And so I would ask for the same treatment for this. Uh, well, indeed, I'd go farther and just say, can we please make these all first and second reading at one and third reading at the following and be done with it. Council? Joe? I agree with Doug on this one too. First and okay. second, and then the third Bill? on the other meeting. Bill? Yes, I agree with uh, Councillor Wilcox uh, okay. on this. Angela? Um, I just wanted to clarify something. I thought, were we making a change of parking in front of the Fraser building? Where do you see that? Evan? Well, no, I'm asking. I, I'm not seeing it. That's why I'm asking. I thought I, I had heard or seen something about changing the parking designation by the Fraser. Your worship, I'll ask. Dave Adsa to speak up on the uh, changes here. Dave, could you, could you help us with this one? Speak up, uh, give us some insight. The what? Okay, the parking in front of the Fraser is going to be tenant and customer parking at the Fraser. Mm -hmm. And they want to move the one over across from the fire hall to uh, Fraser parking and tenant parking over there too on the top part of the portion for the freezer building itself. Okay. So we're still gonna allow parking in both places mm -hmm. for yes. the freezer tenants. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. So if we make these changes, what municipal <coughs> lots do we have for just people coming into Cobalt who are just coming to Cobalt to be tourists in our municipal lots? Oh, uh, you got the one across from the town office. Uh, uh -huh. You got another one down by the TTO, the old TTO. Parking down there. There's some across from the fire hall again. And there's another spot by the Weebies building. The old Weebies building where the old French fry stand used to be. That's okay. the town parking lot there too. Okay, and we're still leaving the town parking lot for residents who can't park in their driveways at the top of Galena? Yeah, as far as I I know, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bill? Yeah, I just have a question to Dave. How do you the, uh, how much of a problem is this at the Fraser House to clean it when people like like say if you had a snowstorm, they're not going to get out. Do they actually um, cooperate and move their vehicle so that you can clean that section after a snowstorm? Because I notice it's well, always clean. It's always clean there, so. I, I got to clean in between cars because nobody moves. They Until move. somebody moves. Yeah. So if somebody moves and I'm going by, I got to clean in between them. I see. Okay. Which so it's kind good. of, no, it's not good. Okay. Yeah. If, they, if they'd move right away, though, I could do yeah. it in 
10 minutes and it'd be all done. Uh, is there a way? That's one of our issues. One of the issues, okay. With our but parking hotel. Okay. So okay. is there a way? Okay. Is there a way? I'm just asking questions to help here. Is there a way? Yep. Uh, say a certain time that you could say, look, if there's a snowstorm, could you maybe make some kind of a negotiating with the tenant that they would actually move the vehicle so that would make it easier on PW to get that section done? Is there somehow yep. that we once could- Once we clean the down, once we get the downtown section clean, they could park down there. Yeah. Well, we're, then, we, then we can clean their parking lot for them. I see, okay. It's simple, but they just, they just don't come out to move them. They just don't care. Okay. Council Rad said. As somebody who lived in an apartment building, you don't always know when they're cleaning. Sometimes I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. Um, yeah. Also, I, I would, can we, can I make a suggestion that we ask them to move them at a certain time in like from two to four or one to three or something? Cause then that way for sure, the other spots are cleared that they can move their vehicles to, and then you've got a designated time where you can go and just sweep that. Yeah, in the morning we we're working out of time now with Pete. Yeah, you know, look into that more. Okay, so the morning is best. Well, because it's a senior building, you're going to have a hard time getting mornings out of them. I'm I'm sorry, you are. You've got seniors on one side, and then you've got people who have other issues on the other side, and as a rule, neither neither ones are willing to go out and freeze their tushes off first thing in the morning and move their vehicle. Well, uh, then they'll have to maybe cooperate just a little bit more when they see it's snowing. It's not you know going to be snowing every day. I'm just saying it's going to be an ongoing battle. I know it is. Uh, Doug? I would like to ask, has any consideration been given to designating uh, parking spaces for the doctor's office and the pharmacy? Yes. Over across from the fire hall at the top for the doctor's office and pharmacy. That's great in a way, but, you know, for people who are getting older, not me, of course, but, uh, you know, sometimes ambulation becomes a serious question, particularly in the winter when things are slippery. And we have a lot of seniors going to see doctors and a lot of seniors going to see the pharmacist. And I'm just wondering if that's really the best use of a couple of sparking spaces, if we couldn't do something to ease their uh, egress to get to those places. Yeah, those people can park right in front, Doug. That's more for the staffing over there. Yeah, well, that's what I'm asking. Though, you know, we, can we have designated parking for people who are going to those offices, to those businesses? Sure, right, right in front would be the best spot for them. Exactly, yeah. But if we could just go one, two, and yeah. you know, parking mm -hmm. doesn't seem to be a huge problem anyway. But I'm just no. trying to think that might make it much more accessible uh, for for those of us who like that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, Pat and Joe, and then Angela. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I was going to say as one that was down sitting outside the doctor's office this morning. Uh, especially through COVID, they only allow one person into the office at a time. So you're sitting right outside the door and that side window watching to for someone to come to the window and wave in the next one person to come in. So you can't be down in another parking spot where you can't be seen or where you can't see the uh, receptionist to get waved in. And in the wintertime, you can't expect the seniors to stand out there for however long until you're allowed in. So that does create a problem right now through COVID, just to point that out. Hey, Joe? Mm -hmm. uh, to maybe ease for your snow removal, Dave, did you guys think of maybe uh, talking to the landlord and get landlord agreements uh, added in about snow and snowstorms have designated times to move vehicles and also some signage stating certain amount of times a uh, certain time of the day after a snowstorm, this will be asked to be cleared so you can clean the snow. Uh, a little bit of education yep. and communication may go a long way. Yeah, yeah, Pete's working on that now with them. Okay. With the bylaws there. 
Okay. And Angela. Um, as somebody who uses both the doctor's office and the pharmacy down there and who is handicap challenged, mobility challenged, uh, is there any way to increase the handicap spots to two and then designate an additional spot for just the doctor's office? Just food for thought. Because mm -hmm. there's a the lot of time. In front. Go ahead. I'm going to say the worst part with the parking in front is that the tenants all park there and they don't move that's why we don't have parking for the people that want to go to go see the doctor and the pharmacist well that and, and that's why we're asking is, can we designate some of those spots specifically for sure. the doctor's office i can't see why not yeah the pharmacist is probably one of the worst ones that don't move is there he'll wave at you at the door Okay, we're keeping. Uh, we're going to keep uh, track on all of these. We're going to look into all of these uh, suggestions. Uh, Bill, no, I had nothing. No, I had. I said my piece, George. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody else have anything to add to this conversation? No. Okay. So, if I read this correctly, now you want your what? Ooh. John. 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 Uh, maybe you shouldn't have recognized me because uh, some councillors aren't going to like what I say here. The uh, okay. um, the issue is the uh, uh, moving bylaws to be read uh, first, second, and then a third time in a separate meeting has two things. First, it's in clear violation of our procedural bylaw. And as I keep harping on that, um, when we violate our procedural bylaw, we um, bring about opportunities to get in trouble. But number two, and more importantly, is the fact that by doing exactly what was recommended uh, moves the decision making process from, let's say, a, a few months ago where a decision making process was three weeks. That decision that council just talked about means it moves to eight weeks. Now, does that serve the public uh, by doing this to move something to an eight week decision process? So, um, for instance, last time there was a policy that's very clear, internal policy, there's normally no, no public debate, and now that policy has moved to eight weeks. So, if there's something comes up in the next little while that we want a decision on, we're looking at uh, anywhere, uh, minimum, eight weeks. Okay, food for thought, guys. Go ahead, Doug. When they're muted, they can still hear you. Doug, you're okay. muted. Damn, you guys missed a great little chat there. Um, hey. Yeah, okay. Uh, Start over. Yeah, I shall. Uh, just trying to find the policy, guys. It's very frustrating. I had it here before we started. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll wing it for now. Uh, Mr. Hodson is almost right, but wrong when he says that we're violating our procedures policy by failing to go one, two, three uh, readings. Uh, that's not true. Uh, the policy says that we shall uh, go one, two, three and pass unless directed otherwise by the mayor. And if we go back to our last meeting and we will note, and because we have it recorded, you can look it up. But I asked the mayor if we could do that. And the mayor said, well, I certainly don't see why not. And then council indicated uh, that that is the way they would like to proceed. So in fact, we are in accordance with our procedural bylaw. Uh, and for a very good purpose, uh, because we want our residents to be fully informed and to eliminate the possibility of uh, missteps or mistakes uh, because of haste. And as we all know, haste makes waste, and this is being hasty. I appreciate John's point that efficiency and expedition or expedience is a good thing sometimes, but sometimes in government, it's not. Sometimes in government, you have to take your time. 
And I would say, you know, the town's been here for 113 years, roughly right now, without this particular bylaw in place. And I think it can survive another month without this bylaw in place. It's not that, crit most of them aren't that critical. It does say in our procedures that if it's an emergency, we can go right ahead and pass things very quickly. It also says we can spend regular order of business to do exactly that. So we have ways to do these things if we need to. But I am saying as a general rule for most bylaws and many policies, it's better to take our time and let it get disseminated to the town folk and then move on. Thank you. Bill? Yeah, as a, in general, I agree with Doug that, you know, we should take our time. Uh, there are there are steps that we can take if we have to, as, as he just mentioned, as if there's an emergency, then we can we can move it faster. Uh, but I like that approach. Uh, you know, I put thought into it and, uh, uh, you know, uh, taking your time, uh, one, two, three step. Uh, I don't see what we're hurt. I think it's a uh, it's a it's a good policy. Uh, and I like the fact, again, I'll reiterate that, uh, you know, in an emergency, we can move something if we have to. So. Okay. So what do we, uh, we have to alter then our, our policies, what, we're, what we have to do, is that what our next step is then, if that's the way we want to go, you, you people obviously have, are determined to go with the three of the two readings. Go ahead, Doug. Uh, it, it is my understanding and my reading of our uh, policy procedure that with your direction, council's wish can be granted. Uh, I don't think we have to necessarily rewrite it. We could. I think, uh, and I agree with John, we should be overhauling that whole policy. Uh, I think there are lots of things that could be improved. I think John and I are going to disagree strongly on what things, but that's life. I can, I can manage that. Go ahead, John. For us to be compliant with our uh, procedural bylaw uh, until such time as we change it and update it, staff has a responsibility to send uh, a bylaw to council to be read a first, second, and third time. And that's what will happen until such time as the procedural bylaw is changed. At that particular time, the mayor at that particular meeting can direct that it be split up. And of course, this has happened a number of times when there are big bylaws like the traffic bylaw. And there are a number of bylaws that we've gone to first and second and third where it makes sense. Not every bylaw makes sense. And that's and for that reason, when you delegate or relegate a decision by the council, which is a decision-making body to an eight week turnaround, I, I just don't find that uh, from a staff perspective, obviously, uh, a very efficient way of doing business. Okay, so go ahead, Angela. I'm sitting here, but now I'm just shaking my head. So correct me if I'm wrong, we can keep doing things the way we do right now, first, second, third, in one meeting for a bylaw, unless there's an issue, and then we can request the mayor to split it up to a first, second, and then a third at another meeting. If, if there's more information needed or clarification needs to come down before anybody's comfortable doing a first, second, and third. That's correct. Okay, so for now, we're fine. No, because town, town, council just Why? agreed that all bylaws would be go, go first, second, and, and third at another meeting. Third reading. That was the direction that council uh, gave, and I'm just updating you that we can't do that from a staff perspective without the policy change and that we have to come to you with a recommendation that it be given first, second, and third, unless the mayor decides from input from council or whatever, uh, that this matter should uh, be carried over two meeting cycles. Okay, I think you two need to go in a back room and duke it out because I think you guys are talking at cross purposes. Go ahead, Doug. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, you know, if, if we're, if we're going to get into this kind of thing where we're going to banter back and forth, and I, I will, by the way, copy uh, that pertinent section of our bylaw, procedural bylaw, to all of you so that you can read it and make up your own mind about what it says. I think John's interpretation is mistaken. But the other thing we can do, Council, if you like, is simply put in a motion to defer to the next Council meeting every time one of these comes up, and that will have the same effect then we can just do it a first, second, third reading 
at the second council meeting from today. We can play these games, but I don't want to go there. I would like to do it in an orderly fashion. Well, what do you want? Do you want to defer this to the next meeting? We have a chance to get a little bit more insight. I see Pat shaking her head. What's what's the rest of you? What's the direction? What Doug? are we de deferring? Deferring the uh, first, second, and third reading. I'm so Motion. Sure, I'll go for deferring it. Well, do I see anybody else there? Defer it. Defer it. What are we exactly deferring now? Because now I'm so confused. Well, until we get more information on this, I guess. It's, it's very confusing as to what is happening here. And we have yeah. to get the, the facts straight. Yes, please defer. And we could sit here all night and go back and forth. Doug, I, now I'm Joe? completely confused. So am I. Joe? Yeah, I was going to say, I am so lost right now. I got no clue what you guys are talking about. John? John doesn't um, All I can say is uh, the, clerk, the clerk has a statutory responsibility to advise. And, and that's what the clerk does. So I can understand council, council's confusion because you have a counselor who is now advising on clerk matters and it's mixing up that role that often causes uh, causes confusion. So um, I'm, not, I'm not sure what the direction is, except that I know what my, uh, as a clerk, the statutory responsibility is, that's for sure. And that's to try to adhere to our, uh, not only the intent of our procedural bylaw, but our, our bylaw and to um, zoom outside it, um, is a dangerous situation in in uh, with people like municipal affairs and and, and ratepayers who uh, you know expect that council has uh, responsibilities under a procedural bylaw and a municipal act and uh, that they just can't change them um, for whatever reason. Go. Yeah, how about we just defer this because I, I think we were talking about parking spots and now we're into first, second and thirds. Uh, unless you want to talk fishing, man, div diverse this, man. Get us some more information, please. Okay, can we have a motion then to defer this to the next? Uh, go ahead, Doug. We'll moved. Move to defer. Okay, seconder. Pat, all in favor? Hang on. Can't hear you. Can't hear you, Pat. Pat, can't hear you. Did I get it now? Yeah. Okay. Which are we deferring, the parking bylaw or the first, second, and third motion? First, second, and third reading bylaw. Oh, okay. John? Just, just one last, last thing. You can't have a motion in a committee of the whole meeting. You can give direction to staff. That's okay. right. To do, but you can't okay, have sorry. a meeting in a committee of the whole meeting. Well, you can't. Okay. Okay. So we have a direction then to defer this. Okay. Boy, that's a tough one. 10.6, Councillor Wilcox to discuss DSAB Q3 report relating to seniors housing statistics. Oh, oh, there I am over there now. Okay. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I wasn't realized I was going to be asked to do a full blown uh, discourse on it. Uh, my point back in our previous meeting when I discussed it was the uh, notation that you had pointed out, George, that yeah. there had been a shift in applicants and the volume of applicants mm -hmm. between uh, uh, seniors and others, uh, most notably singles. And I thought with that new information, it deserved a second round of appeals to DSAB and to our surrounding municipalities. And when we look at things like the letter from Elk Lake, which they have a very similar kind of a problem as we do. And, you know, I realize DSAB is between a rock and a hard place. The government is saying, you got to find a house for these people. And we have housing stock. And if it's vacant, get them in there. 
And that makes very good sense. But I think we've already lost the seniors, what was a senior's uh, residence at the foot of Galena Street to low cost housing for general population. We have a part of the Fraser home that's available for low cost housing for the general population. Well, I guess it is now. Uh, but I think the Elk Lake letter very, put it very, very well stating that seniors become very distressed when they have to deal with noisy young people, distracting people, having to lock doors when they go down, even to a laundromat uh, in the building. Uh, it's not conducive to the kind of comfortable lifestyle that our seniors are entitled to. And at some level, we have to protect their interests. And I think designating at least that one residence opposite St. Pat's School makes imminently good sense. And I think we have to send out another round of letters and include letters to the minister himself to try and get some attention drawn to this. Okay, is every bill? Yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I certainly think that's a very good point uh, that Councillor Wilcox makes on this. Um, I read the letter from the Township of James and uh, it looks like we're not the only place or the only municipality to have these similar problems. Uh, so it's time to get letters out again so that uh, perhaps maybe we can get some coordinated effort from the other communities to go at ESAP, uh, uh, you know, to, 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 to at least acknowledge our, our, our concerns, uh, which they're not. Councillor Adsett. Um, I would also like to suggest that whatever we send out to the other communities, we also copy the minister on the Ministry of Housing. Okay. Okay, so we'll send another round of letters to uh, municipalities that haven't responded. Bill? Oh, yes. And is the, uh, our MP, local MP, uh, copied on this? He can be, he will be. I think he should be too, also. Mm -hmm. John? Um, <clears throat> just to follow up on, on Councilor Wilcox, the, there, there have been a series of two letters sent out to uh, different municipalities and uh, a letter sent out to the uh, municipal group's representative that sits on the DSAB board. And it was a, the, the intent was to get support from different municipalities and go back to the board with a reconsideration uh, recommendation. So we've received two, I know it seems like a long time, but we've received two and I expect that uh, more will be dealing with it over a length of time, but I think we'd be better armed going to DSAB with the request for reconsideration if we had more than two. And that's why I was going to wait for another maybe uh, four weeks and let's say if we if we don't get anything from it because i know of at least two municipalities that share strong as strong opinions as expressed by council wilcox as, as, as we do uh, but it may be that they haven't got uh, to the issue so uh, i don't think the point is to send out another letter to municipalities but rather uh, send a, a a report to the uh, um, dsab with the uh, demand for reconsideration of their decision not to have a seniors here. Councilor Wilcox? Uh, more than happy to defer. Uh, John's advice is sound in this matter, I think. And uh, I have no problem with that. But at a point in time, I think we have to point out that the, uh, the stats have changed and the stats have changed in favor of the seniors who need a place to stay. And, and I think at some point we need to use that yep. in our uh, arguments. Yep. Uh, Councillor Edson. And I think we need to drag our MP in to, into this mix. I, I really think he needs to be aware of the battle that's going on with DSAB about getting senior housing designated. Okay. Councillor Duve. I think we're forgetting the most important people here. Uh, let's see if we can get some testimony and some letters from the residents. They're the ones that are going <laughs> through all this. So let's get it right from the front line and send it to our MP, send it to whoever it needs to be done. Uh, it's really nice to have other municipalities sending us letters, but if we don't get support from the people themselves, this is going to go nowhere. Okay, good idea. Good point. Bill? Well, we, in answer to Councillor Dubé, uh, I think we do have statistics. Uh, people are actually moving out. Uh, 
they don't want any hassles. They're moving out. A lot of seniors, I know two or three people that have already moved out. Uh, getting back to uh, John's recommendation about uh, not sending another letter to the municipalities, I think United together, we're stronger. Uh, I think that if we're all together, perhaps maybe uh, we get the different committees and, uh, or the different municipalities who will share the same problems. Perhaps maybe we could uh, form a committee uh, with the different municipalities to attack this at a different angle. Okay, that's that. Uh, yeah, when we're looking for uh, letters like for our senior residents as to what it's like in those buildings and uh, per perhaps for an anyone that we know that had to move out of town in order to go into senior housing. I know there was, there's was, there been residents that have sold their house because they're ready for senior housing and they have had to move out and they went very unhappily. They didn't want to leave Cobalt. So, uh, you know, the letters of testimony from them would be good too. And it should be our MPP that this is all going to because DSAB is provincial. Am I, or am I wrong in that? <laughs> You're right provincial. There. Mm -hmm. Councillor Wilcox. Uh, yes, and I would add the uh, the minister uh, as well. You know, he should be advised of the, the these developments. Uh, I'm only suggesting that you go with John because sometimes it does take time to get other municipalities to respond to these kinds of things, and so yeah, getting a few more numbers in would not hurt at all. Uh, but in four weeks' time, I, I then think we should we should take the interval of time. To Bill, perhaps you could contact people you know who've moved out, and Pat, you could call people who couldn't move into one because they had to leave our town, and get those kind of anecdotal letters in that we could add to our package. I do believe that would add a tremendous amount of weight uh, to our argument. Sounds good. You guys willing to do that? All right. Excellent. Okay, four weeks. Thank you very much. Okay. Items for council information. Township of James, letter to DSAB. We've already got it. We've read it. It's very good. Township of Harley, resolution of support. That's a better good one. 10.9, Ministry of Northern Development and Mines, Cobalt Mining Hazards Preliminary Finding, EXP Town Site Number 1 Report. That's for council information. It's not in very good shape, as they're indicating. So something we'll have to keep on the radar. Okay. Be it resolved that council accept the items as presented. Is there any uh, mo a mover and a seconder, please? Pat uh, and Joe, discussion? All in favor? Carried. Other business. I got one quick thing uh, 2022 budget. Uh, Staff is in the process of getting started on the budget. If you have anything you would like to see added into the budget, please contact the office in writing so we have a paper trail and it will be considered on in the budget process. Okay, other than that, that's it, that's all I have. Go ahead, Doug, you wanted to speak in, uh, under other business? I did. I'm just writing down uh, items for budget so I don't forget your uh, direction there. Okay, a number of comments I want to make, and I want you to know all that I'm not headhunting. I'm not trying to cast stones or anything like that, but there are a lot of things that I feel very strongly about uh, that I would like to see altered. Uh, the first one, uh, I, I had mentioned the paving of grass boulevards along the Highway 11B corridor. Uh, so we know we spent almost $26,000 doing that. Uh, there was no tender call because tomorrow did it, which by the way is one of the things David had alluded to. Uh, it's very hard to get quotes for paving in our town and tomorrow is one of the few that we can go to with success on a regular basis. So that part's fine. For myself, when I saw that work happening, I was very deeply offended and angry. I still am. And I thought, how can this be? Why don't I know anything about it? And so I asked my fellow councillors if they knew anything about it. And all of them, to a man that I asked, said, no, first time we've 
heard about it was when they were actually uh, starting the paving. And I thought, how can this be? What has gone wrong? Because this is my third council I've served on. And in all of those councils, I've never had an instance where something like spending twenty-seven, twenty-six thousand dollars $26,000 was done without my knowledge. And so I thought, well, what, what, what did they give us in the budget? And I see on, in our budget, the presentation to council uh, was pretty straightforward. Under roads, it said item 14, paving project, $75,000. There was no detail there whatsoever. And that's how none of us knew about it because it never came to us as an itemized project. And that has to change. I've taken it on the chin from lots of people in the town. Lots of people have chimed out on it. Everybody that I have spoken to is tremendously disappointed with it. The only reason when I queried it, I was given that this happened was because of an excess of doggy do accumulating on the grass. And that's why it had to be paved. I will tell you, I was a little bit insulted by that answer. It was a very uncomfortable comment. I did not appreciate it. Uh, at a time when the world everywhere is trying to get rid of climate changes that we're experiencing, everybody's planting green stuff. Nobody's paving. That's verboten. And yet it happened here in Cobalt. So apparently we don't mind forest fires and floods and droughts and all the other nonsense, the hurricanes, the tornadoes, because that's what happens when you get rid of Mother Nature. Uh, terrible, terrible effort here really badly done, very upsetting, and I'm quite quite miffed about it. And now I'm having trouble with this. Why won't that go away? Well, you're absolutely right. We, I guess we did make a, a mistake and we'll definitely attempt not to repeat those same mistakes. Yeah, the, the upside of that, George, that I would offer a notice of motion is that for all future budget considerations, well, it's gonna be one for this council, uh, that all budget presentations shall be submitted to full council in a special meeting uh, with complete details for our consideration. Absolutely. And that will solve that problem. Okay. Now, for some reason, I'm having a terrible time reopening this. I'm going to have to go back and go back in. I'm sorry. Um, public works, three quotes. Uh, I wish I could see the full thing. I don't know what I'm doing wrong here, guys. Can I help you? I know. I don't think anybody can, George. I, I, it's uh, Bang it. <laughs> I've been hitting it, I've been thumping it, but I won't get it to go away. Uh, wait a minute. Yep, done. The recent purchase of sand by Public Works were three quotes obtained and was the lowest quote successful. Well, we've just reviewed our purchase to, uh, policy and it clearly states three quotes will be obtained. So our policy wasn't followed. Instead, the answer we get is, is that the decisions were made based on quality of mixture, supply issues, and budget allocations. That's nice, but I'm sure it was in excess of $1,000, which means we should have had three quotes. And the reason we have that policy is so that all of the suppliers in our area are treated fairly. And as I said earlier on another matter, I would like to see us do things consistently in accordance with our policies. I appreciate that sand is a budget item and it gets uh, approved, but still, let's do our three quotes. Mm -hmm. uh, item three, snow removal. Uh, we've had a lot of discussions lately about snow removal and what's going on. That, that, business of trying to move a bus stop so they could pile snow in front of a business downtown. Uh, and the question of sanding here and there. And on that note, I, you know, when I look out at Ruby Street, whatever we're using to sand 
seems to be piling the sand up on the very edges of the street and everybody on this street drives down the middle. So sand isn't getting to where the traction is required. So again, it said, are we using the right equipment the right way in the right places to accomplish say snow removal? I see some problems and I would like to see a, a staff report on that and what can be done. If uh, the, the sand isn't getting to where it should be getting, then we have to do something about it. Um, if other people want to complain about uh, areas being left unplowed or wings raised inadvertently, I will leave it to them to do that. Uh, but a lot of things happened that were not, I think, appropriate. Uh, and the black hole of information. All kinds of things are falling through the cracks. Uh, and one of the things I tried to bring up is a, a notation under no old business where everything that's unresolved would be listed. And we got a, a, a response that said, uh, um, we have something that can be utilized by a counselor who wants to formally address the shortfall. Well, that's true, we do, but it's not a constant reminder. And that's the point of what I was trying to bring forward. Uh, I got especially disappointed uh, with some of the f further comments, like uh, items that are confidential should not be included. Well, obviously not. You know, we're not brain dead here. We know the rules are. But su suggesting that old business listing was eventually abandoned as a bad practice for many municipalities, uh, that it would often see this agenda item improperly used as an opportunity to make a whipping boy of the town manager or pit one councillor against another or make council look bad. Well, those are very negative kinds of thoughts and I don't share those. I like to be a positive person. I wouldn't tell a parent not to train their toddler to walk because he might fall down and hurt himself because then you're denying that poor toddler a whole world about to hit him right in the face. It's going to be fun. He can walk anywhere and do anything. And that's what getting back to listing old business does. I used it when I was mayor for three years. We had none of the problems alluded to in that response. What we did do is get a lot of things done in a very orderly manner. Nothing fell between the cracks. When council passes a motion to paint the handrails in town, if it's gone through two years and we're working up on a third and somebody says, well, we're, we're aware of all of these things and we're working on them. I don't think you are. If you were, it would have been done two years ago when council said it should be done. Lots of things are falling through the cracks. We, we spent 25, 26,000 bucks paving grass. That was enough to fix up the handrails and they're in crappy shape. They're, it's a health and safety item. They're on the 11B corridor through town for a reason. They protect people from falling. But, you know, if you're going to reach out for a railing and you got to wonder how long ago you had your tetanus shot before you dare grab it, you have a problem. Not to mention how unsightly it is in our town. We have people who run real estate businesses. If I was looking to buy a house and I went through a town and I saw the railings in that shape, my first assumption would be this town doesn't care. Why would I buy here? We need to do better. And it's not happening with thoughts like that. Unfinished business listing on every agenda brings it to our attention. It focuses your attention. It gets us to ask questions and it gets the job done, which is what we're here for. And if you're worried about what people think about you, if you're doing the job and they're seeing things in motion, they will think good thoughts about you, not bad. That's all I got to say. Okay, well, thank you very much for your input on that. And we will consider the unfinished business uh, on the agenda. Thank you, George. You're in your future. Okay. Anybody else? Bill? Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I really like uh, Councillor Wilcox's idea about the old business because then you have action items. Okay. Then you can list them. And I like that in the sense that you know, if you have an action, well, what's been done? So here's an action item. This is what's been done. And uh, we can go back because there have been things uh, that hate to use the word, but can slip through the cracks. So I do like that. I think that would be very, very good um, to refer to old business. Okay. As action items or some sort, you know, just so things don't fall through the cracks. 
Okay, we'll have a motion then uh, for the next council meeting and we'll uh, make a suggestion to bring back and finish business on the agenda. Is that fine? That work? I, I would very much appreciate that. I think it's a really positive idea. Um, and, you know, it's not intended to make anybody look bad, not our staff, not our workers. It's just to be there uh, as a focused reminder of what we need to get done. I'm going to warn you, I spend a lot of time in the town office and our list of unfinished business is going to be very lengthy. And, 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 not, and all the more reason to focus on it and see what we yeah. can get done. Okay, very good then. Anything else? Okay, confirmation bylaw. Be it resolved that bylaw number 2022-1 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council of the cooperation of the town of Cobalt be taken as read a first, second, and third time and finally passed this 11th day of January, 2022. And further that said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and recorded in the bylaw book. Mover and seconder, please. Bill and Angela, all in favor? Carried. Adjournment, be it resolved that the committee at a whole meeting uh, of council be adjourned at 8.16. A mover and a seconder. Doug and Pat, all in favor? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.